there is a difference between being called into the office of a prophet and being set as a prophet. Are you there? Meanwhile, the next time we find ourselves in South Africa and we have the opportunity, we'll do the school of prophets. We'll start it so that I teach. Then you know what the prophetic ministry is. In Southern Africa, we need to teach every believer about the prophetic. And there's a reason why. Well, I won't say it today until the week. So first of all, we need to define what it means to set. Because if God is going to have in, make impact in the territory, what he does is that he begins to set men that he has called. God does not call men that he has set. God sets men that he has called. Come with me quickly. Let us do this setting matter. When I finish the setting, then I will go to number two. I will stop there. Then we will pray. Come with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1. Are you there in Jeremiah chapter 1? Verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And that's calling. Can you see? Calling. Do you realize that your calling was set in motion, was established, was determined before you were formed in your mother's womb. Your calling is as old as your spirit. No, I, I, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Do you know the age of your spirit? I can show you from the Bible if I have time. The age of your spirit. Your spirit was created before time began. Your spirit existed as a seed of eternity. It was in that form that God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So the Bible says, before I formed in the belly, a new day, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Stay with me. Stay with me. Are you with me? Now, this is it. So when God decided to create your spirit, he attached that spirit to a mission in eternity. For some of you, it is the mission of becoming a prophet. For some of you, it's the mission of becoming an evangelist. For some of you, it's the mission of becoming a shepherd of nations. You have a calling to provide leadership in the political space. He ordained it. Stay with me. Are you there now? Okay. You must understand that the goal of Christianity, the goal of me being a Christian, what God wants to achieve for which he made me a Christian is because he wants me to conform completely to the image of Christ. That's the goal. Because God will accept Christ in every vessel. I mean, if it's not Christ, he will not accept the vessel. So the goal is that he wants me to conform into Christ-likeness. 
And if it uses the word conform, it means that's not how I was born into this world. I was born deformed and salvation provides the spiritual capacity if I walk with the Holy Spirit consistently for me to be conforming day by day into the image of Christ. That's the goal of our believing. Exactly. Now, when you were, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God now ordained unto Toko, for instance, to be a pastor. And that's predestination. That is ordering your life even before your life began in time. Only the immortals do that. It is within that context that there is true power. Because you were not consulted before you were made in South Africa. You are not with me. How much power do you think you have? <laughs> when you couldn't determine what nation you would come from. Because... So some of you here will not want to have come from the nation where you came from. And you have wanted to be somewhere else. And I don't want to mention where you want to. <laughs> but he whose is the power determined that you will be a South African. And also determined, without consulting, determined that you will be a pastor by God. You know what that means? When you come into time, Satan will bring you so many choices other than what you were predestined to be. And if by any means you now realize through the Spirit of God that I was predestined to be a pastor, and you begin to prepare for becoming a pastor, you get that? You begin to make effort begin to study because if I'm a pastor I'm going to have to feed the flock with the um, scriptures so you give yourself to the scriptures you see he's he's making you a pastor before time pastoring will be your own unique path confronted with all the challenges that are needed for you to reach into the riches of Christ to surmount thereby bringing you into conformity with christ likeness that's your unique path that you will use to attain to christ likeness for you is pastoral. for me is apostleship for him is the ministry of a prophet do you understand that but the goal is what oh you are, you are not in my class because you are not in my class you know how i i protest when the people <laughs> I reduce the syllabus. And then, yes, that's the way. That's the way. The reason why I'm an apostle is not so that the whole world can hear me. The reason why I'm an apostle is not so that I will shine. <laughs> the immortals put me on this path because they know how stubborn I am. And the challenges on that part are, are, are equal to my stubbornness. And the things I will encounter, the fights I will have to fight, the contention I will have to keep up with, are all designed to bring me into conformity with what? With Christ likeness. You see, if you are a student of the Bible, you will find the parameters by which God will judge us. And I don't want to veer off from my message. So I will dedicate one in, one whole weekend to show you the snapshots of the afterlife. Don't run without knowing where you are going. The parable of the ten virgins is suggestive of the fact that your growth in Christ is one of the parameters that will you be used to judge you at the judgment seat of Christ. The, par the parable of the ten talents it's, it's a proof that one of the things that will be you will be judged by is a compendium of giftings. 
and the expectation that heaven has by reason of your endowment in those areas. And I don't have time today till we come back so that as you are running, know where you are going and let that advise you are running. Because I'm not here to be a champion. I'm not here to be a star. What's the name of the place we, we just came back from? Yeah? F fell. Welcome. So we went to the campus to preach. When they saw me, because preachers were asking, is he coming? When they saw me, they were amazed that the preacher of this caliber can come here. That even preachers that are South Africans won't go there. But I'm not designed to preach only where there are stages that are lit like this. No. That's not the idea. We have a very wrong concept of ministry. A ministry that wears shining robes. A ministry that is glistering. A ministry that looks nice. Meanwhile, there's nothing wrong with that. Meanwhile, Jesus could be on the good platforms and then he finishes a big crusade. And the reason why he, he travels for another five, ten kilometers is to meet with just one individual. So for him, ministry is doing his father's will. And his father might have him stand on a big platform and his father might have him journey into the woods in search of one man. I was hearing a big minister in my nation speak. He now asked, where are you from? And then the person mentioned the location. He said, do you have an airport there? He said, no, we, uh, we have, but it's not uh, functional. So how long is the distance from the nearest operational airport? Uh, it's like four hours on a road trip. So said, no, I don't do road. I fly. Yamo seli do cobre sala coria. Such a person will have a challenge when he appears before the judgment seat of Christ. He is using the lenses of time and the definition of success from the eyes of men to shape his life. He will be ashamed in the day where it matters. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord. God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Now follow me now carefully. Verse 9. Can we have 9 on the screen? 9. Then, after the Lord, imagine someone, God is calling and God is saying, I will deliver you. What's the meaning of that? It means people will come against you. And it is, if not because I will be with you to deliver you, you will not survive it. That's what, how do you call somebody into that kind of an enterprise. The first day you are introducing the assignment to him, you say, okay, I will be there to deliver you. <laughs> Let me not trouble you. Let me not trouble you. After you gave him the assurance that I will not stop the people from confronting you, the only thing I am guaranteeing is that 
before they destroy you completely i will now appear and then i will deliver you do you know that this is how prophetic ministry is i don't want to trouble you until we go to the school of prophets the next campaign we do that's the area of education i want to bring to us the bible says then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i have put my words in your mouth what's the meaning of that what's the meaning of that does it mean that everything that god wants you to speak he gathers it and he has put it in your mouth is that yeah, okay at least you know experientially that's not it and that's why we still need to pray to find out what are you saying so what does it mean by i have put my words in your mouth that's the first question please remind me of this question if i answer all of them then we'll start praying the first question is what is the meaning of i have put my words the first thing that happened before this commitment, Evelyn, so I called you as a prophet to the nations. Said, Be not afraid of their faces. Whatsoever I ask you to speak, that shall you speak. I will deliver you. Then Apart from talking to him, he now came to him and touched this man. And said, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Can I answer that question? Then we'll go to the next. But attempting to answer it will increase my teaching time by 15 minutes. And you don't mind? Put your hand there. Put your hand. Mark that scripture. Come with me. Let's go on a journey. Let's go to the book of First Corinthians, chapter two. Can we begin from verse 6 in the reading so that you you will see the progression how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that that come to naught but we speak the wisdom of god in the mystery even the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would not have crucified the lord of glory but as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of this world but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god which things that's my emphasis verse 30 we speak how do we speak them not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the holy spirit teacheth now so when we speak the things of god you will need a new vocabulary to communicate the things of God. And the vocabulary will not be in the same trend with the vocabulary that you will need to explain physics, law, engineering, the things that man's wisdom teaches. You will need a new set of vocabulary. And this new set of vocabulary, just like God gave you a language of prayer called tongues, he gave it to you. Huh? 
Because you need a new language to pray accurately. You also need a new set of vocabulary to speak about the things of God that are hidden. So when he touched Jeremiah's mouth, he gave him a new set of vocabulary that had this stature to communicate things at his own level, at his own frequency. Very soon you will discover that you, you may know something. Many of you, you have had dealings, but you could not explain what you encountered. It means you don't have the utterance to communicate the spiritual thing. The spiritual thing is existing, but you don't have the utterance. So you are, you are handicapped in communicating that spiritual thing. You can walk in the spiritual thing. You, and there's evidence that you know it, but you cannot explain it because you don't have the vocabulary. If God is going to bring you into the ministry of explaining it, he will give you vocabulary that is <laughs> consistent with that reality. Such that when you are describing that reality, it, it is not diminished in any sense, in any form, in any fashion. 